This is Dr. John McGuire from Colorado State University and the professor of French horn here. Today we're going to talk about number 86, the Larghetto, from the Colorado Allstate Horn Audition. First, a couple of general comments. Number one, please remember that this piece is about your lyrical abilities. So make these lines sing and always have your lines moving towards somewhere or away from somewhere, but never let your sound be stagnant. Next, make sure to have lots of tone colors and lots of contrast with your tone colors. Lots of bright colors, lots of darker colors will do the trick. Next, make sure to take note of the key. It's A flat major, which means we have four flats. D flats in particular can be a little tricky if you aren't paying particular attention. So make sure that to mark them in if they give you any trouble at all. Subdivide all of your long notes. Use the printed breath marks wherever indicated. It helps with the phrasing. And lastly, when you practice this piece, try singing each phrase with your voice. If you can make it convincing with your voice, then you can do it on the horn, guaranteed. This will really help you achieve beautiful lines in your horn playing. Now for a few specific details. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the indication of the staccato under a slur. Make sure that you exaggerate the clarity of your articulation. Don't make it too legato, but certainly don't make it fully separated like a true staccato. Exaggerate the clarity. In measure one, let the dotted half note move forward. Lean into it dynamically so that it sounds like it's going somewhere. In the next measure, let the dotted half note there do the exact opposite. Let it taper evenly. In measure three, look for the sequence. Make each part of the sequence sound a little different. Perhaps make each part a little bit louder. In measure four, after the sequence, make sure that long note is tapered, again, evenly. In measure five, similar to the opening, it's just a little bit higher. Also, think of slightly accenting the grace note for clarity so that it doesn't sound like you've made a mistake. In measures seven through eight, notice the crescendo and the decrescendo are over a larger span of time than earlier in the piece. Each one is about twice as long as before. Pace each of these very evenly. Now for measure nine, note the dynamic. It's pianissimo here, and this is the softest volume so far in the piece. Make sure that that dynamic is obvious to the listener. Next, bring out the staccato articulation under the slur, as we talked about earlier. It's a different articulation here. Draw attention to it slightly. In measure 10, watch your rhythm. It can be a little tricky if you're not careful. Measure 11, lots of air through the slur. Make your line sing. Make sure to decrescendo all the way down to piano as well. In measure 12, make sure to play this line very smooth. Don't let it come across bumpy at all. Smoothness is the most musical thing you can do here. In measure 13, let the entire measure lead into the long note in the next bar. Let it build up into that next bar. Measure 14, as a contrast, taper your long notes evenly and with control. Measure 15, slightly accent the grace notes that will help ensure that they come across clearly and cleanly. In measures 15 through 16, think of this as one long, even building of intensity and volume to the high A flat in measure 17. Measure 17 through 19, one long decrescendo here and a gradual releasing of intensity, the exact opposite of what you had in the two bars previous. Measures 19 through 20, make sure you go all the way down 
to pianissimo, but don't let the air lose focus. Keep the air driving through the end of the last note, not to the last note, but through it. And now, here is a full performance of this etude for your reference. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at any time. Good luck in your audition.